they've been around since prehistoric times. Oysters have survived when many, many, many other things have become extinct. From the bayous to the restaurants, oysters have helped to define Louisiana. There's a mystique about what is this flavor going to be? And you get in a real bite of the sea. You want to eat some oysters? <laughs> but oil in the water threatens many layers of the oyster industry. One example, the burlap sacks. I have on hand 240,000 bags. Normally I could sell that in two months. I'm hoping I can sell it in the next two years. In a place called Bayou Grand Cayou, Santos Rodriguez captains the Miss Allison through waters that for now remain clean. I've been doing this since uh, 1982. 1982. You know, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow or in six months. They will haul and measure their catch with a very traditional method, old but resilient burlap sacks. Each sack, weighing about 100 pounds, equals $14 for Captain Rodriguez and $3 for each deckhand. A good day used to mean 80 sacks. Today, the team has brought in 30. Mr. Rodriguez says his family is worried. They tell me that I need to look for another job, but this 27 years I've been working in this, and I, don't, I really don't know how to do something there. But I learned, like I learned, Fish. But this is going to be hard. Tagged with the Louisiana seal, the bags are then transported to a processing plant. This is motivated seafoods in Houma, Louisiana. Before the oil spill, the company processed 60,000 pounds of oysters a day. I would say less than half we're bringing in now of what we did in June of 09. Mike Foisan is a seventh generation oysterman. He and his brother run motivated. To be able to get into menus, you have to have the product available. Uh, you can't miss orders too often, and that's one of the challenges we're having right now. With 60% of his oyster beds closed and less product coming in, Mr. Voisin has cut down his staff. He's eliminated the night shift altogether. But while work has slowed for Mr. Voisin and the crew of the Miss Allison, it has stopped completely for the supplier of these burlap sacks, a former oysterman turned entrepreneur. I knew that somebody had to sell the bags. Just one day I decided I wanted to see if I could make a living doing it. 22 years ago, Steve Earhart began to buy used bags in bulk from coffee companies. He sorted and bailed the bags and then resold them to seafood distributors. Let's see, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 12, 13,000 bags right here that you can see. He called his company Steve's Burlap Sacks. This isn't the most desirable job. It's hot in the summertime, it's freezing in the wintertime, and all year long it's dusty and dirty. As his business grew, he became known as the burlap sack guy. He hired six employees. Each one of these flaps represents 100. We have 400 in the machine right now. He paid them $13 for each bale of 500 bags. But demand for the bags dried up after the oil spill forced the shutdown of many oyster beds. A few weeks ago, he had to lay off his staff. And I brought them all together and told them that I think we'll finally reach the end. They all asked, when will we go back? And I, I still today, I can't tell them if we'll ever come back. For now, bags still arrive to the French Quarter. But 60 miles to the east, in an empty warehouse, a businessman wonders about what comes next. One of my worst fears is throwing this away because this is all paid for. My money's involved in this. This is my bank right here. 